Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to call on Matt Bailey with the FCA for the invocation. Amen. Stand, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, now for the uh, Pick'em Contest, Kevin Selman's going to do it, so you know what that means. That means he didn't win. Good afternoon, everybody. This week we had 26 pick'em players. The last man standing uh, game of the week was Miami at Clemson. 25 players out of 26 got it right. Dickie Smith did not. <laughs> the upsets, according to the Pick'em Sheet uh, last week, were Georgia Tech over Louisville, Duke over Syracuse, Boston College over Pitt, NC State over Virginia, Texas A&M over Florida, and Kentucky over Mississippi State. A few interesting picks this week. Out of 26 players, only six got all the high school games right. Uh, let's see, Coach Early, you here? Raise your hand. Okay. Uh, Jim Roberts, my friend Jim Roberts, is he here today? He's not here. Oh, he's not here? That's let's get Coach Early in the back if you want to wave at him. Uh, I really wish you weren't today. Uh, last week, Westside beat Pendleton 63 to 7. 63 to 7. Everybody in the room got it right, but Jim Roberts. I'm from Georgia. Okay. That's, that says a lot. Um, only three out of 26 correctly picked AM to beat Florida Bill Brissy, Scott Drake, and Matt Harbin. <clears throat> the breakdown we had six players at 15 and 5, seven at 14 and 6, and Five at 13 and 7. Our loser of the week at 11 and 9 in a league of his own, and a winner of a custom made porcelain turlet, compliments of Cobb Oxford, is Mr. Tony Stevens. Thank you very much. There you go. Scott's going to get you picked. Uh, no. I'm collecting these. Things. Okay, that's right. Put that in your room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also in a league of his own, our $50 winner of the week at 16 and 4 is Mr. Scott Drake. Right. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Now for that moment that we always look forward to. The players of the week, the coach of the week, the jokes of the week, none other than Coach Jim Fraser. I told my handlers, George and, and, Scott and Chris, I said, now I'm too undignified getting up to this podium he says, how about y'all get me up there in a dignified manner? And Bauer, we got it. Right, boys, way to go. All right. Okay, okay. So, Clay, that brings us to our JV joke of the year, of the week, of the week. Uh, so, the, uh, um, uh, the person said to the other guy, I said, that's a remarkable dog you've got there. I said, well, He's not so remarkable. Why do you say that? He's sitting there, he's playing poker with all those people, and he's won three or four hands. He said, yeah, but if you'll notice, every time he gets a good hand, 
he wags his tail. <laughs> I believe I just told that. Tell us, try this one. This is the That was like a C team joke. C team. <laughs> okay, so I would say don't stop me. I mean, stop me, but don't stop me. So the, the, the lady said to her husband, says, uh, you know the washing machine doesn't work. And he says, well, am I the Maytag man? Next day she says, honey, you know we're having trouble with the vacuum cleaner. Do I look like the Hoover man? Uh, honey, you know the computer's not working. Do I look like Bill Gates? Uh, honey, next day my Ford Explorer is skipping really bad. Do I look like Henry Ford? And so like a two, two days later, she says, honey, not to worry. She says, I got all those appliances, I got the car fixed. Great, great, how'd you, how'd you pull all that off? See, you remember that handsome young man that moved four doors down from us uh, two months ago? Well, he came by and he fixed them for me. And he says, that's great, that's great. So what would what, you, what, what happened? He said, well, he, he told me, says, uh, I'll fix those for you. If you bake a cake, uh, take me out on the town for a romantic evening. He says, okay, well, where are we going? She says, do I look like Betty Crocker? <laughs> All right, well, Player of the Week, Coach of the Week, uh, from the, if I lay this down, it, it, it slides off, and so that's why I have to hold on to them. Our offensive Player of the Week is John Baylor Altman. Uh, we had John Baylor back here several times last year. He is from Palmetto High School, a quarterback, 6'1", 185 pounds. He's a senior. He was 15 for 27 for 338 yards and three touchdowns last week in a Palmetto 49 win over Berea. Uh, for the year, John Altman is 82, uh, eight, eight, uh, he saw for seven, time, seven touchdowns and 820 yards. Last year, he threw for 3,024 yards and 28 touchdowns. So let's hear it for John Baylor Altman. <laughs> with John Baylor, we've got his head coach, Doug Shaw, and his dad, Jack. Stand up, please, Jack. Let us check you out. Thank you. Our offensive lineman of the week comes from T.O. Hanna. He is Jahari Kosar. He is five foot ten, 240 pounds. He's a senior. He's a guard. He graded out at 90% with three pancakes leading the way to 453 rushing yards and a 64-7 win for Hannah over J.L. Mann. Uh, so, offensive lineman, Jahari Kosar. Come up here, Jahari. <laughs> With Jahari, we've got his position coach, Coach Quinn, who retired down there in Georgia. Coming up in double dipping and doing quite well. Glad to have you in town, Coach. Our defensive player of the week is uh, Jalen Rembert. He is from Powdersville. He's 6'2, 246 pounds. He is a sophomore linebacker. He had, he had five tackles one tackle for a loss, one sack, one quarterback hurry, one interception and a 58-0 win for Powdersville over Carolina. This young guy now is only a sophomore. You better get in line here, Coach, because he's already been offered by Virginia Tech, by Arkansas, by MTSU, that would be Middle Tennessee State University, 
and by UAB. Who would that be, Bruce? Oh, that would be University of Alabama and by ETC. Who is ETC? Oh, et cetera and so forth. <laughs> Okay, with uh, with Jalen, we've got head coach Robert Mustar. We've got uh, we've got his mom Jennifer, and his dad uh, Bernard. So, how about Jennifer and Bernard stand up, please? Thank you. Also, we have his position coach, Joey Brewer. Is it Johnny? Johnny. Johnny. Johnny's your so. <laughs> I bet a lot of people will call you Joey now. Uh, defensive lineman is from uh, Westside, Jarius Brown. Uh, he is 5'9", uh, 195 pounds, a junior defensive lineman. He had three, seven tackles, two sacks, two tackles for loss. All in the first half in a 63-7 Pendleton. Uh, Pal uh, Westside win over Pendleton. Uh, with, uh, so let's hear it for J J J Jarius. <laughs> Our coach of the week, Scott Early. He's beginning his seventh year at uh, Westside High. He's coming off head coach stints at, at, at Chapin, at Lexington, and at Myrtle Beach where he won the state championship. He has a total of 22 years as a head coach. And what Scott does is kind of unsung, but the North-South Touchstone Energy Bowl game that you see at Myrtle Beach each year uh, is, is organized and put together by Scott. Of course, they pay him well for it, or he wouldn't do it, so, but it is, a, <laughs> it is a very great job, he does. All right, tonight's game, we've got uh, Crescent entertaining West Oak. We've got uh, West Side going to Walhalla. We've got, uh, well, Pendleton and Seneca has been called off because of uh, some Seneca people uh, testing positive. Uh, we've got Powdersville going to Blue Ridge. I'm sorry, we got Blue Ridge, we got Powdersville entertaining Blue Ridge. And we've got Palmetto. Uh, we've got South, I got this back. We've got Southside entertaining Palmetto. And tomorrow at, uh, at high noon, I think, at BH3, we've got a pretty good game coming up between uh, Wren and BHP, and that will be at the BPH field. Thanks for coming and see a game of your liking. It's good to be here today to uh, see everybody and introduce Coach Clay Hendricks, uh, head coach at Furman. Uh, coach Hendricks is a native of Commerce, Georgia. He was quite an athlete in high school, was a three-sport uh, sport standout in football, wrestling, and golf, and won the state championship his senior year in football. In 82, he came to Furman on a football scholarship under head coach Dick Sheridan. And you Clemson guys uh, will uh, like this. Uh, as a player at Furman, his offensive line coach was Robbie Caldwell, who said, Clay Hendricks is one of my all-time favorites and one of the smartest, if not the smartest, players I've ever coached. And I can uh, flip that and say he's one of my all-time favorites and probably the smartest coach I've ever played for. Following graduation in 86, Coach Hendricks joined Sheridan staff at North Carolina State for 86 and 87. Came back to Furman as offensive line coach in 1988 and immediately won the national championship. Um, from 88 to 2006, uh, we had many Southern Conference championships, playoff appearances. Coach Hendricks uh, coached uh, several all-conference players. In 2007, he went to Coach at the Air Force Academy. <clears throat> While at the Air Force Academy, he coached the offensive line, served as offensive coordinator and assistant head coach. He returned to his alma mater on December 19, 2016, as the 23rd head coach at Furman. And since he's been back, we have an overall record of 22 and 14 with uh, 
Southern Conference record of 18 wins and six losses. He and his wife, Leanne, have two sons, Cal and Mac. It is my honor and privilege to present you Coach Clay Hendricks. Thank you, Mendel. Um, you know, I, I certainly I appreciate the, the opportunity to be with you today. Um, George sent me a text just a couple weeks ago. And boy, this time of year, I, anything that returns somewhat to normalcy, I'm all about. Uh, so asked if I could come down. I said, obviously, would love to come. I think I was here maybe a couple years ago. Uh, you know, since that time, I have my youngest son is actually a uh, – a sophomore at Anderson University right over here and um, so uh, certainly great to be with you you know certainly congratulations to you guys for uh, all your award winners and coaches and I'm just I'm, I'm appreciative of you getting the opportunity to play and uh, it like I said it's been a uh, it's been a crazy time as all of you know I, I look around here here says John Can and you know John was a was a grad assistant my senior year there at uh, at Furman with for Robbie Caldwell there, so I've known John and you know we're we're all getting old. And I look back there and I see Doug Shaw and you know Doug's dad, Doug Shaw Senior, was one of my favorite guys. I was a young coach and uh, you know he he was a Furman guy and he wanted a guy at Furman so bad and you know because this is back you know in the heyday of Myrtle Beach football too and and it just I don't know we just never seemed to get one either you know we, we, at Furman we have to check a few more boxes. Uh, you know, when you start talking about admissions and everything else. And, uh, but I tell you what, we got a kid right now, Evan Jumper, as our center, is a Myrtle Beach kid. And, and, you know, I've been, this is my 20, who I've lost kind of track of the years. I was, you know, between about my 27th year in association with him. He may be as good as we've ever had when it's all said and done. He started most of the year last year as a true freshman for us. And, uh, but he's, he's doing Coach Shaw proud because I, I know he, he'd be thrilled to have him there. But, um, you know, for me, I think I, I turned 57 this summer. Uh, I started playing when I was seven. It's the first time in 50 years I'm not either coaching or playing in the fall. So it, it's been a – it's certainly been an unusual time. Uh, we are in a, in a practice right now. We're having a spring practice in the fall, I guess you would call it. In fact, we're going this afternoon. We went last night. Um, at our place a little bit, sometimes our biggest struggles is uh, finding time we can get them all to practice uh, because of our class schedules. So we've been on kind of a Tuesday, Thursday evening, uh, and then Friday and Saturday we usually go because we can get them all. Um, but today will be number eight practice for us. We basically were given as an exact replica of what we did in the spring. You know, we were one of the few schools that got our spring practice in. We, we went in February – which is typically what we've done. And so we had finished our spring, you know, our spring practice. Uh, we wanted to finish before we went on spring break. We went on spring break and I actually was playing, uh, coach asked me about Bobby Lamb, you know, who, I, you know, worked with, I actually grew up with Bobby. Uh, but we, we were playing at about that time, I think the ACC tournament was going on and uh, they were saying, oh, we may delay them a week to come back to school because all this COVID stuff had come about. and. I think we were out there playing that day and saw that the ACC tournament had been canceled. And, you know, who would have imagined we'd be sitting here, you know, late October and, and still dealing with a lot of the stuff that we're dealing with. Um, so, you know, we're in the practice mode right now. Um, we got really good at Zoom and nobody knew what Zoom was. We had a blocking combination that was a Zoom call for us. Uh, I said, well, if I'd have known that, we probably could have made a little money off that. Uh, because our old L coach now is a guy who played for me at the Air Force Academy, and he laughs every time I hear him make that call. I said, lo and behold, who would ever thought, you know, the world of Zoom. But, uh, again, just been an interesting time. You know, we've, uh, you know, the way recruiting has gone, uh, you know, basically stayed in a dead period all the way through December. Um, we're one of those schools that has had to, our footprint, so to speak, recruiting-wise, has had to continue to expand. Uh, to find kids again check all the boxes for us we're looking for a particular student um, and so we've had we've had to branch out we've had a lot of success recently in in texas uh, a little bit in the midwest um, but you know a lot of that when you're doing that you're counting on being able to get kids to your place to see it particularly in the summer well they couldn't come so uh but you know our, our staff has done a phenomenal job um, 
you know, sorting through all this process. And, uh, and so we're out, we're out there practicing. Um, and, you know, I've, I've actually, George asked me a little bit ago, he said, how about the schedule? I said, you know what? I told our team last night, I said, I've seen this. I've seen the schedule. I've seen it. Hadn't been approved yet. And, you know, we could talk for a, a, an hour and a half on why it hadn't been approved yet and, and all the ins and outs of it. But uh, the plan right now, you know, for us is to, uh, we would open the weekend of February the 20th. Uh, uh, and we'll, we're looking at a nine-week window where we would play eight conference games. Uh, there's even a little bit of hang-up in that because some of the conference teams didn't follow the guidelines that were given to them. You know, we've had four teams or have four teams in our league that, that played some games this fall, which they were allowed to do. Uh, that There was a limit on it. Certainly something we looked into. Um, you know, we originally had the University of Tennessee on our schedule, I think, week three. You know, and, 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 you know, just so you understand sometimes the challenges, you know, it was about a, I don't know if it was $500 or $550,000 payday for us. Lo and behold, somebody at Tennessee needs to give their lawyers a raise uh, because they had the word pandemic in the contract. Uh, you know, because our plan was, hey, I don't know what y'all are doing, but we're going to show up in Knoxville on, we'll be there on September 19th and we, we're going to play. And lo and behold, they had, they had the word pandemic in there, and they also had a word in there if anything was uh, dictated by the SEC, which theirs was, you know, they didn't play any non-conference games. I know, particularly with all the orange I see here, the, the little bit of the, the contest that went on, you know, between that non-conference game and, and a little bit back and forth. So, you know, so we lost that game. Um, you know, we, we would have had three non-conference games. We looked, there were some people we were talking to. Um, you know, again, just going back to the challenges, you know, I think sometimes for us at a school like ours, I hear it sometimes in recruiting, ah, oh, football's not important over there. I say, well, I can tell you this, it may not be important, but my, my, my scholarship budget every year is $4 million. That, and we don't, you know, we get zero from the Southern Conference. You know, I think, you know, Clemson, for example, I think every school gets $30 million plus from the ACC. I'm sure that number's going up. So, it, you know, we are a tuition-driven place. And, you know, for us, the most important thing, really, for our university was to get kids back to school and, and get everybody. But we've done a phenomenal job managing that. You know, we're in a practice time right now where when we started practice, we had to test once a week. You know, we've, we've been, you know, two weeks of practice now. We've had zero positives, you know. There's a little bit of luck in that, I know, but also think it's something we've worked really hard. Our, our university, and we've got, uh, you know, we're really, we really have all of our students there. I'm sure there's some that have opted to go virtual, but, you know, we're about a 2% or less, you know, positive. So just been trying to deal with that. Uh, learned lots about tracing, you know, and I think we kind of learned the hard way when we first brought them back. Uh, you know, so again, it's just it's just one one thing after another that we've really kind of had to deal with, and and really now, uh, just, just to give you an example, things sometimes th people think you just line up and play. <laughs> well, starting in, in, in February, I, I'm sitting there right now. We have six kids that came back for a fifth year to play this fall. Well, you know, if you know much about our kids, our kids usually graduate in four years, maybe a little bit over. Sometimes we have to slow them down. Um, and so all those, most of our kids come back, they play that fifth year. Really, they can, NC has a rule in there. Your last, your last uh, semester of eligibility, you only have to take what you need to graduate. So we generally would say that where those kids are taking one class. You know, they play their fall, they'd all graduate in December. Well, now they're not playing. So obviously they've made an exception for them to be able to come back. I'm still waiting to hear what are they gonna require of them. We actually put an appeal and said, look, the kid just graduated in December. Why, does it, why, why would you even have to make him enroll? You make one-time exceptions for everybody over America. You know, kids can transfer and get eligible because somebody said something ugly about their mother in the stands. And the NCL will grant a waiver for that, you know. I said, the kids have done everything you've asked them to do. You know, give them a waiver to play. They're going to be done in May. You know, we hadn't heard yet, so I, I don't know what will come of that. Uh, but in our world... I still got to pay for their school. And, you know, it's like I said, the NCAA, well, we've given, you know, we've given exceptions over the number of scholarships. Well, are you going to increase my budget 
so I can pay. I said, you know, I, I know I can bring that kid back, but he's still got to figure into the budget. Well, then the next thing they did, you know, they, they waived the, in, the entire group for a year. Well, what's a little bit unusual, the very first class, this group of seniors we have was the very first class we signed. We came in the first year, we played 14 freshmen. So we didn't redshirt many of these kids, it's just kind of where we were. So a lot of these kids can be redshirted. Well, most of them are on plan to graduate or on, on track to graduate. Um, and so for me, I'm trying to balance out, you know, we've got all budget. Furman says, hey, we're gonna take care of those kids. We're gonna, we're gonna do that. But for those fifth year guys now to come back next fall, you still got to find, you know, if there's, if there's six of them back. And, you know, we're, we're about, I don't know if you know, we're, we're right at about $67,000 a year to go to school at our place. So, you know, so trying to have that in budget for those kids to come back. Well, the only place it comes from is this recruiting class that's coming in. So then you maybe have to take a couple less guys to cover those guys. And so sometimes I felt I need to get Mendel over there. And I need an accountant sometimes. That's the other reason I hired a bunch of smart guys. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I learned, you know, technology is certainly not one of my, one of my gifts. So I tried to hire some guys, but it's pretty amazing to watch us, you know, kind of work through. We have a little spreadsheet that we work through just trying to, trying to keep, our, keep our numbers in line. Um, and again, I, I don't think it's going to be so much as, uh, an issue with NCAA as it would be just trying to make it budget-wise. Yeah. The other thing, you know, this is the stuff. I had a kid walk in there last week. He had been home. He actually got traced from, from a COVID kid, got sent home a couple weeks. He came back, and he said, Coach, he actually had a knee injury last year, came back for his fifth year, didn't get to play this fall. Um, he said, Coach, I got offered two jobs last week. One of them's told me they, they won't wait for me. They can't guarantee me it'll be there in May. So he says, I got you know, I got to make that decision. He said, the other one, Maybe it's an opportunity I can come back and play and then still have the job opportunity. I said, well, that's why he came to Furman was to have those job opportunities, you know. I said, that's got to drive everything you do. And I said, you know, it, you, you got to do what you think is best for you. But, it, you know, it's just, like I said, it, it's, just been a, it's just been a crazy, crazy time. And, uh, you know, as we, as we, as we work through it, uh, I, I kind of felt like if we could ever put a – on that February 20 date, and we could write another team's name on there, at least on paper, and put it out there. I think they'll do wonders for our kids. We've, we've done, I don't know if any of you have known this, but Mendel, you might have seen this. We've done this little series. They call them Lunch and Learns. During this whole pandemic, they get people on here. I was on there once. People were going to ask you questions. We got a kid that starts for the Minnesota Vikings, a former player, the offensive guard, Dakota Dozier, a kid from Columbia. And uh, I, I, it was really interesting. It kind of hit me one day. I, I was watching it, and they asked Dakota, what do you miss most about college football? Dakota's been in the NFL now. I think this is maybe his seventh year. He said, well, the thing I miss the most is just the camaraderie, the locker room, hang around with the guys. Well, and it kind of hits me. Our guys can't even do that. You, you know, our, our kids' biggest times they've gotten in trouble all falls when we had too many people in a room, you know, because of all the things. And, you know, they get a warning, and in the second case, they'll send them home. You know, and it's just been a and, – and you, you harp and harp, guys, it's the rules, not real fun. But you're not doing that. You can't play, even though some people you're going to play are playing, so you're watching that. So it's just been uh, – I guess the best way is some – I was reading an article, maybe Pat Ford, sports sister wrote an article, said if you're a coach, player, and mostly talking about college football at the time, coach, player, administrator, you're miserable. Said so everybody's miserable. Uh, I talked to a friend today. He's got a daughter at Wake Forest that's just going to school. He's got another son at Princeton that's a senior. And Princeton's gone virtually on everything. And he says, I'm paying $150,000 a year in tuition so my daughter can be miserable as a freshman because she can't do anything. And, and the senior, he can't even go to class as a senior. Uh, so, again, just, just the challenges, you know, we continue to go through. And, you know, I think for us, I told our team last night, you know, the adversity part of it, you know, learn a lot about your team. I do think the way we're built, the culture of our football team, you know, for us it's always been, you know, high-character guys that love to play. I've kind of learned that. If you get those guys that love to play, that really – you can get away with all kinds of stuff. They'll overlook stuff if they just get to go play. Um, so it continues. We've kind of been built in that direction. 
Um, and, and, you know, who, who knows still what lies ahead? Uh, I think they set our, our deal up that you could play eight games in nine weeks. I mean, obviously, as we look around the country, what's the likelihood that we got, you know, nine teams in our league? What's the likelihood that nine teams are all going to play eight games, particularly when you don't have any buffer time built in there? We do have a playoff set up. Uh, normally, ours is a 24 team you know, deal. That has been cut to 16. Um, so, you know, our, our conference champion will still get an automatic bid. Those at large bids are smaller. Um, so, uh, you know, I, for us, you know, I asked our kids the day we reported in July, because I knew some of this was coming down the wire. I said, you know, what do you want to do? And we laid out all the scenarios, because there was a time at our conference we kept pushing to play, at least having the option to go play. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, they want to play for a championship. You know, I, I came back here, we'd won 10 games in three years. Uh, I always tell somebody, I, it, probably wasn't a, it probably wasn't a dumpster fire, but it was smoldering pretty good. And, uh, you know, come back and, you know, for the great, great tradition. I, you know, I was there, we, I was there for all three national championship games we played in. I think I've been there for 11, 14 conference championships, either as a player or coach. And, you know, and for us, we turn around, you know, in three years, we've been back three years, and the last week of the season, we're playing for the conference championship all three years. And, you know, I, th I think we finally got back to the point where, you know, we're, we're expecting to play and win championships every year. And, you know, our goal is to win another national championship. You know, I came back, you know, we were looking at some things you tried to do budget-wise. You look around the country, and there were two programs around the country that clearly stood out when it came to what they were spending. Well, guess who that might have been? The green and gold team from North Dakota, North Dakota State, and James Madison. You know, they were spending far and above more than anybody else. So, Obviously, it matters. You know, obviously, it matters at Clemson. It matters, it matters lots of places. But, uh, you know, but our, our, our people have been great, made a great commitment to our program. Um, I just understand in recruiting, uh, you know, we're looking for a certain kid, again, that fits us. And not everybody's going to be successful at our place just because, you know, whether it be academics, you know, putting all those things together, they got to see the big picture four or five years now. And, I, you know, somebody asked me, what am I most proud of in all my time? My most proud of guys like Mendel Key because the guys, we got tons of those guys. And, and they're off doing unbelievable things. You know, we built a new football building about six years ago. It was about a $15 million project. It was 80% funded by ex-football players. I don't think you could do that at a Power 5 school in the country. I really don't. Now, one guy may have a bunch of money because he's been playing in the NFL and he maybe could do that. But I, I just, it's been important in our place for a long time. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, for me, uh, this is, uh, again, I, I'm sitting here and this is year 35 for me doing this. And for me, I, I don't think this has changed. It's, it's really who do I get to work with? And, you know, I have the say-so in that. I got an unbelievable group of, group of coaches. Uh, it's who do I get to coach and is Coach Sheridan has reminded me on numerous occasions that, you know, recruiting's a choice. You choose to take him. You like him on Saturday because he's a really good player. You need to like him on Tuesday too. Uh, and, and so it's really who do I get to work with, who do I get to coach. And at the end of the day, can you, can, you know, we all want to go win and compete for championships. And it's a little more challenging in other places. Our place, it's a challenge. You know, recruiting's a challenge. We, you know, we signed, for what it's worth, we signed the number two recruiting class in the country. A year ago and i'm like you realize how hard that is to do at our place uh you know we're probably farther ahead than we've ever been recruiting this year and i don't know if that's part of because of covid i think probably had a little something to do with it but you know a time when you couldn't even get kids to campus so it's been uh you know it, it's been challenged we're trying to make the best of it and remain as positive as we can and it's still fun to go to practice uh, i still enjoy that part of it and I think when I ever get tired of going to practice and it's not fun anymore, I'll quit doing that. But, uh, but, uh, but you know, I tell you one thing, I think there'll be some really good football in the winter that you won't be able to get to see anywhere else. We certainly would love to. Now, I don't know how many people they're going to let come to the stadium. I had an argument about that the other day, too. So, I, you know, things are getting better. I hope they continue to get better. I know in a couple of weeks it's going to change. I don't know. It, there'll be some things will be better, some things will be worse. Because, you know, and – you know, certainly our country and challenges our country's been going through and uh, just trying to support our players as best we can and certainly have a great opportunity for them. But uh, uh, that being said, anybody got any questions?
about about anything. Yeah. Well, all right, this is one of the problems, okay? And, you know, if you know much about FCS football, you know, some years we play 11, some years we play 12. It's all dictated by some years there's an extra week between Labor Day and Thanksgiving. When there's an extra week, those are the years you can play 12. Well, I don't think it comes up again for a couple of years, and I think there's two years back-to-back. So this is an 11-game year. That's all you can play. Well, when our league decided, the presidents finally voted, okay, we're going to play our conference schedule in the fall. You can play up to three games because we're going to play an eight-game conference schedule in the spring. Well, the only option was, was to appeal the NCAA, which they chose to do. The NCAA denied the appeal. They said, no, you can only play 11. So instead of playing three, they played four. So now that leaves them with seven. Even in the spring, they can't play but seven because you can only play 11 games. That's one of the hang-ups. Um, I actually think they probably probably tried to play some more games. There just was nobody to play. Yeah, Because there's been some talks of people not even, not even playing in the spring FCS-wise. So that's, that's, been, that's been one of the hang-ups. We looked into it. If we could have kept the Tennessee – you know, we even inquired, you know, when they had the Citadel game, we even inquired. We, we inquired. I just, you know, the hardest thing for me was ramping up. You guys coaches know, ramping up, ramping up a season to play a couple of times. And at the end of the day, all I felt like we were paying for was the testing. You know, and then maybe if we'd have had that Tennessee game or a game like that, uh, then, then maybe it would have, you know, been worth it to, to do it. Maybe our kids would have looked at it. But when the spring schedule got moved, then they said, we're going to play the FCS championship. Our kids, it wasn't even close. I mean, I took a, I took a vote. It, it wasn't even close. They wanted to play in the spring. But that's where that is. They're saying you can only play 11. And they've already played four, so it only leaves us seven. So how do you get everybody to play eight in the spring when one team can only play seven? So I think that's one of the things they're talking about right now. Anybody else? Right. All right. Well, I just want to say I certainly appreciate you know being. We'd love to see you over at our place. Uh, I'm, I'm hope hoping we get to kick off at home there February 20th. I told our players I said, hey, we're normally practicing that then. We practiced last Saturday morning. If y'all remember, the weather wasn't too wasn't too hot. I figured I told them I said, well, you know what, we're gonna play in some bad weather. I promise you in February and March. The only difference is that day. I said it won't be 65 degrees. And raining probably that day we play, so you better get ready to that. So it'll be a, it'll be again a little bit of test of the will and adversity, and as always, you need to be a little lucky and and all those other factors. But uh, again, I appreciate you having me today, and wish you guys nothing but the best going forward, and uh, would love to see you at Furman sometime. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Certainly appreciate you coming over and meeting with us today. All right, I uh, want to uh, recognize all our sponsors, uh, Granger Nissan for the meals for the athletes and the coaches, Dillard Sports for the t-shirts for the weekly winners, Dillard's Trophy for the weekly winners plaques, Ryobi for the uh, weekly coaches gifts, and i tell you, that's some pretty nice gifts. It, it really pays to be Coach of the Week now. Uh, Harris Florin for the video streaming, Ralph Hayes Toyota and Palmetto Insurance also for the video streaming. And Blake and Brady Boutique, Bill Brissy. Thank you, Mr. Our old, old longtime president, Bill Brissy, over there. His phone just went off a minute ago. Uh, the, I do that on purpose. I just like to be recognized. Yeah, well, that's, there he is. Uh, the printer and also Cobb Oxford. Next week, we got one of our favorite old speakers. Uh, David Bennett's going to be here, and John Can, who played with him down at PC, will be introducing him. So that ought to be interesting. Okay, if that's all, I don't know. Y'all, y'all have a good weekend. <laughs>